Hey, what's up, Whammy? <laughs> Fix this a little bit better. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Yeah, that's all right. Um, so I'm making this video because I got asked uh, a few questions um, by um, the real good friend of mine. And we were just kind of, we were talking about basically just kind of like trading war stories. Like, you know, fix this a little bit better. Okay. Um, we were just talking about, you know, things that have happened. And, um, excuse me, my eyelash here. Um, if you guys see my eyes go like this, it's because <laughs> I have long eyelashes and sometimes they'll get entangled up and I'll open my eye real wide to untangle them. Anyway, um, the conversation, it got kind of deep. And, uh, First of all, I, I want to say this. Um, I have like, I don't know, five videos, maybe six videos talking about um, situations I've been in where I had to grab my gun to save my life. Um, and you know different scenarios each one's different and that's that's how it is it's life but i'm gonna go ahead and let you guys know i don't tell you everything you know um for multiple reasons um what i mean by that is there's there's certain situations i've been in where I shouldn't have been in the situation however I was I was there it has a lot to do with where I grew up if I grew up in the suburbs or something then I wouldn't be in those situations but I didn't I grew up in at the time a, a, a tough area and there's just things that come with that nothing that I did myself nothing like I've never put myself in a bad situation. I've never done that. I've never put myself in a bad situation. It's it's literally something just comes. And um, survival. I, I think even your, your boys who are war veterans. I think even they can understand what I'm about to say and agree with what I'm about to say. When it comes to survival, sometimes you do have to break rules to live. Like, so, so there's certain times where you have to bend what's right, whether that be morally, legally, you know, whatever, logically. Sometimes you got to bend it in order to survive. And uh, that's the reason why there's a lot of things I don't talk about. Um, because you don't know, you also don't know how people are going to take it, view you, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. But there's just a lot I don't talk about. Um... Now, not nothing crazy, you guys, okay? Not not nothing, like, not a murderer or nothing like that. I'm talking about just, like, survival, like, things that have happened where I just had to do some stuff that I don't care to talk about to, to get out of it, to live, you know? Um, again, never killed nobody, nothing like that. Um, just things that some people may look down on, but they don't understand that you know over a, a you know your, your, your computer screen or whatever you may think that uh, you know these situations you gotta you know it's all pretty but it's not man you know uh, hell is hell 
And when you when you're in a hell like situation, there are times where you gotta in order to beat the devil, you gotta be more the devil than the devil. So anyway, um and I mean that in a way of like like the mentality, right? I'm not talking about actual you know action necessarily just just your your the way you view the situation you know you you may have to you know if you're if you're in the shark with if you're in a tank with sharks you got to be a shark man or or a killer whale you know what i'm saying like you got to there's certain things you got to do and and I actually I can be a little more blunt in what I'm trying to say. There are certain things that certain people might look at me. If I told them a lot of the things that may have happened or what I have to do to get out of a situation, they might think, well, that guy acted like a thug. And 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 I don't I've never been acted like. I don't that's not that's not me. That saying it's in itself is is irritating but that's another story um you know but they might just kind of look down on me like and and i don't like that because they don't they don't know they don't get it you know yeah but but you take somebody who's been in vietnam war you know and, and you pat those guys on the back but they let me tell you something they're much more than myself you know, there's things they don't want to talk about because they, the same way, I'm telling you, the people who've really been through this stuff, what I'm saying right now, they feel what I'm saying. They know exactly what I'm talking about, okay? The ones who, you know, those who, which is the majority, people, if, if you haven't, then it's it's it might not be as easy to understand, you know, but you got those guys that was in, you know, Vietnam, whatever, Korea, even this war, you know, Afghanistan, Iraq. They understand what I'm saying. You know, there's there's things we're like, I, they're, they're not going to talk about it because people are going to go, you're a bad guy for doing that. It's like, no, I was in hell. And when you're in hell, you got to do what you got to do to survive. And that's just what it is. Um, so anyway. In the conversation that we were having, it was um, kind of a couple, couple questions came up and it was like, um, you know, we talked about how hope we never have to be in that situation again, or hope those things never happen. It's that and the other, um, and that's real. If I can go the rest of my life without ever having to gr grab my gun, okay, that's a great life. I, I don't ever want to have that happen again. Um, however. It was the question. This one of the questions was, "Do you think you?" Because it was kind of like the. Let me get my words right. The conversation kind of went in a direction where it was like, um, "What doesn't kill you only makes you stronger." And that question came up: "Do you feel like you're stronger?" And I'm like, "Well, I feel like." I learn from a lot of these things, but I never really thought about something that happened to come to my mind during this conversation. Um, and what it was is, I thought to myself, I'm like, you know what? I'll tell you what it did do. I'm not scared anymore. Okay, that that's what it did do. And what I mean by that is like, you know, if you end up in a situation where you may have to use your gun and the other person also has a gun, you know, the bad guy, whatever, they have a gun or maybe two or three guys have a gun and you're by yourself, just you with your gun. Um, you, you know, movies or video games or whatever um, might make some of you think that in those situations you're going to be like, 
you know, I can do this, and brave, and, you know, all your practice is going to come into play and all that. No, it's scary as hell. Okay, here that's the that's the real truth. It's scary as hell, especially the first you know couple times. Like it's it's your your heart's falling down in your stomach. You know you're trying not to defecate on yourself. When I say that, I'm not saying that to be funny. I'm dead ass serious. Like you're literally trying not to shit on yourself. Um. So there's that, but then. After, you know, so many times, I'm not scared anymore. So, you know, it, there is a. I did. Get, I did become stronger with it. So, so now when something happens or I'm looking at something that could turn into something, right? Um, obviously, the first thing I'm doing is just getting the hell out of there, right? Um, and I don't even go out to clubs, you guys. I don't go to clubs. I don't. I don't. I barely, you know, like bars or anything like that. Very rarely. And and that's just my decision, you know. And the reason why I'm, I do that is because I don't want to be in a bad situation. Alcohol changes people. It brings out the worst in a lot of people. And I don't want to be around that, uh, knowing I have a gun and. Just don't want to be around that, all right? Um, and but the difference with me now and then is, like I said, the fear is not really there as much. I know what I'm capable of. I know what I can do. Um, not based on training tactics or nothing like that um, I'm just saying that's not what mine is based on it's based on um, the things I've went through in my life and I know that I know how to survive and um, if if I'm for instance if I'm with like my family if I'm with me my brother uh, my dad mom girl whatever and something pops off, I want to be in control because I know what I'm made of. I know that I know how to handle these situations. And my dad kind of want, is the same way. You know, I can't, what I can't do is put myself in front of my dad. You know, he, he's the real deal. He's the real deal. Um, you know, and that's where I was raised by, you know, my grandpa, my mom. So that did what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I don't even know if that's true always, but it is true in these in, in this situation. For me, it has made me stronger. Um, it's made me maybe more. I assume that something negative can come out of something more than the average person. Right, so I might see something going down. I'm going, you know what? It's time to leave. And somebody's like, man, it's it's fine. It's it's not gonna be anything. It's all good. Why are you scared? Well, I'm not scared. I'm just I I don't want to be. I can see what could come of this situation that's going on in this area, and I don't want to be here. You know, um, and that's that's how I work. That's how I, I do things. That's how I live. You know, and that's how I keep my family safe. Um, but it does, I guess it's actually somewhat comforting that if something does happen, I know how to handle it. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I'm not saying I won't be scared the next time. I'm just saying that I know what I, like for instance, my adrenaline dumps. I know what my adrenaline does to me. I know how focused I get. I know, you know, all these things. I know what what my advantage is, right? And and I and I know how to de-escalate. Um, I know how to do all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Uh, from experience, and so yeah, when things, you know, if something happens. 
I can handle it and I'm not afraid you know I'll go at it full full force right um, and with that being said I know I have the advantage you know that's another thing I know I have the advantage you know it's so, so some situation gets bad and it's gonna come it looks like it might come to guns being drawn and whatnot you're gonna see something happen and you might go I you know I thought that that was probably not a good idea but now that I've seen Eugene do what he just did if I'm ever in that situation again that's what I'm gonna do you know that that's probably something that, that'll that'll you know people that has happened um, because some people like live by these goofy rules right like this is one rule if you're gonna pull your gun you better use it that's what they say and that's the dumbest thing of it I don't even know why that's a exactly a, a saying um, but if you, you if you say that in a very broad way it is true like when and when I say broad I mean like like if you're gonna pull your gun use it using it might just be you know to have someone at gunpoint like don't move until the police come I'm using my gun right um, or if I beat someone on the draw like what happened at a.m. p.m. I beat him at the draw and I got the gun on him and I'm telling him dude don't take your hands out of your pocket don't this here's the commandments I'm giving you you know I'm trying to de-escalate it but this guy's the lunatic sound like he's high on PCP um, but I'm using my gun I'm using my gun to keep him where he's at so he's not trying to rob the store rob my friend any of that right I'm using my gun so in, in that in that sense it does make sense don't pull your gun if you're not gonna use it um, for instance, there's that video of those two guys at the, at the gas station, two, two uh, young black guys look like they're black kids, and uh, one had a backpack, and the, and the one guy pulled out, looked like an AK pistol, I believe it was, and, you know, that was supposed to be him, like, yeah, I got this, and I'm big and bad, right, and then ends up putting it back in his, so he pulled it and didn't use it. You could say maybe he tried to use it to scare somebody. But then you put it back and the guy is still there. So you, know, you didn't really use it. You know, you didn't use it right, should I say. You know what I'm saying? So if you pull your gun, you better use it and keep using it until the situation's dead. That might be a better way of saying it, right? Um, because... Yeah, um, they're just this. Life's not black and white like that, you know. It's not, especially these situations. It's just not black and white like that. So, um, yeah, I, I just kind of want to make a video on that, you know. Um, and it was, it was, there was, it was two questions that came up that made me think it was, it was one was, did it make you stronger, and the other one was um it was basically do you think you have the advantage now and it was yes you know um so and you know look um the wild west is the wild west man you know and even that's misunderstood you know and uh you're not when I say I have an advantage that's all that means that means I have an advantage that doesn't mean that I'm gonna win this situation that doesn't mean I'm gonna win this gunfight I just have an advantage Michael Jordan didn't win every basketball game he played in and when it comes to this this is like you don't get to play another game if you lose you're, you're dead But I don't have fear of that. I'm, that's how confident I am. You know. It's been through a lot, man.
been through a lot and survived it. Should I teach these things? I don't feel like I, I, I'm qualified to be a teacher. Because I don't even know if some of the things that I do are something you're supposed to teach somebody necessarily. Like I might teach it to my family, you know, maybe my, if I had a son or my, you know, my daughter or something. Like, hey, this is what you got to do to live. Forget all that other stuff. Like, this is the real stuff. You know, that'll happen. Now, that's how my dad, you know, spoke to me and my grandpa. They spoke to me like, you know, you know, there's there's training, there's this, that, and the other, but you want to survive. Um, this is how you really do it. You know, and the first thing is the mentality. It's the first thing they drilled into me is the mentality. Safety is actually number one over fire, but and and weapon manipulation. But it's it's you know besides those obvious things, it's the mentality. Your mentality got to be straight. If you don't have the mentality for it, um, you're gonna fold. You're gonna fold under pressure. You know, and situations like when I had the, um, I had a guy at gunpoint, and I had my I had pressure on the trigger and a, a teacher might say to you when I say a teacher like a firearm trainer they might say don't ever do that don't ever do that because you could accidentally pull the trigger and then you accidentally killed somebody I can agree from a, from a teacher standpoint if I was teaching somebody I would tell them don't ever do that too but I know what I can I know what I'm capable of and I know the situation that I was in and I felt like I had to do that. I was in a situation that where it was like, if he does this, the best I can go for is that he dies too. Right? That that's the best outcome if he would have done what he what I didn't want him to do. So I need to put that pressure in there. I needed to be that if he shot me, my reflex would have pulled the trigger. That's how much pressure I was putting in that, you know, and I knew exactly where I was at because I was zoned in. It's another thing. Like, do you like in these situations? How are you? What does your body do for you? You know, and that's a that's a huge that's a huge thing. That's a big reason why I have an advantage, because I know exactly what my body does, you know, and uh, and everyone is different for everybody. It really is. I mean, we're talking about something that's vast, you know. Um, there's a million different ways someone can be under a max adrenaline dump. And I just know how I am. And that is a huge advantage. Um, and, you know, I, I, I know that I'm zoned in. I know I can put pressure on this trigger. I know that I'm not shaking during these situations. I shake afterwards. I shake when everything's done and over. The calm down brings the shakes. That's what brings the shakes for me is the calm down. But the actual adrenaline dump at the moment, I'm perfectly still. I'm perfectly focused. I have not drowned out everything else around me. But I am zoned in at the same time. Anyway. Um... But I won't teach. I'm not. I'm not a teacher. I leave that for um, people who have more experience than me. You know, um, people who've actually had to take lives um, and have actually saved lots of other lives, and uh, people who know how to, uh, you know, work as a group. Because I don't. In you know, all my situations. That one situation I had to work as a, you know, just two of us. Um, but outside of that, and that was something that you can't teach that. You know, that situation just was that situation. I just had to be smart. You know, my buddy's driving. He has his gun right here, and I'm in the passenger seat. I can't have my gun and we both be shooting out the same window if it had to go to that right I could hit him it just makes no sense 
So I had to be intelligent, lean back, you know, just figure out what I had to do. Lean back and go out the back window. This way I'm leaning down. I'm not really seeing much. They can't really see me a lot, but they can they can see me about right here. They can't see a gun. You know, it's the situation just called for what it was. And I I did what I needed to do for that situation and we got out of it. Again, another situation I did not put myself in. I just it happened. Um there's so much, you guys. There's so much that comes with this stuff. But um, um, when you guys train, my advice is uh, go get you some training from um, guys who really deserve uh, to be teaching this stuff um, that have been through hell, been in the hell, um, because there's there's a lot of these black and white uh, areas that you might have questions for, and the guys that have been in it can give you that direct information. Whereas, um, you know, guys who have not, they can, the, all, the only information they can give you is whatever they happen to be told, taught, or happen to ask a certain question that they took in themselves. But there's so much more. Okay, there is so much more. You sit here and ask me about situations. I could tell you things all day long. But if you got, you can go deeper and ask me deeper questions that I won't put out there unless you ask me. And I can give you an answer straight across. You know. So, um, I'm not saying any onlys. I'm not down on anyone who uh, teaches, who hasn't had any experience. I'm just saying... Um, you know, if you're going to, let's say, in, in other words, if you're going to train, let's say you're going to go, I'm only going to train one time, pick the experienced trainer. If you're going to do a lot of training, it doesn't matter, you know, uh, get, get, a, get an experienced guy, get a guy without actual experience, but still knows things because he's been taught by experienced people, right? It's kind of like that, 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 that do you want to take firsthand information or secondhand? I mean that's facts. This is what it is. Do you want do you want first hand information? You want to be taught first hand, or do you want to be received second hand? And that's that's uh, each person's own decision. That's it for this video, y'all. Why me out?